Hello and welcome back to Matt's Automotive Channel. This is part five of the video series. And in this video, we're gonna clean up these valves. They have considerable amount of carbon on them. So we'll get those cleaned up. And also the cams, they have uh, quite a bit of rust on them and uh, they also need some cleaning. So we're gonna put these into a tube of evaporust and see how well that works cleaning these up. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we have all the valves out of the head now. And uh, some of these are in pretty darn bad shape. I mean, look at the carbon buildup on that thing. That is just crazy. And um, there's a few bad ones there, as you can see. The second one there isn't too bad, but this one is just horrible. And um, I usually clean these up with a drill and a Scotch-Brite pad, but um, since I have the uh, Kim Dip here, I think I'm gonna take one of these valves and uh, put them in there and just see how well it does. So. I'll take one of these that are fairly bad. This is probably the second worst one. And um, I'll just get, put it in here, let it sit overnight, and we'll see how it looks in the morning. Okay, so to clean up these cams, um, I didn't want to be wasteful with the evaporust, so I got a container that will uh, contain the cams. And uh, so I went ahead and got the two foot section of ABS drain pipe and a plug. That's, I'm just gonna tr twist this on to seal it. And uh, I'll put it here in the vise. And what I'm going to do is fill this with the evaporized and then set the cam down inside and let it sit there overnight. And then we'll pull it out and see how different it looks. Hopefully, we'll get all this rust off. Okay, so let's go ahead and pour this into the pipe. Right, and we'll check it in the morning. Okay, the valve has been sitting in here overnight, so let's go ahead and pull the valve out and see how well this uh, Kim Dip carburetor cleaner worked on the valve. So, there we go. And you can see he's still pretty nasty there. Let's see how easily this just wipes off. Oh, pretty good. Look at that, it's just melting away. I think we might need to soak it a little longer, but wow. Yeah, it uh, definitely ate in into that carbon there. All right, well, let's just give it a, a little bit more time and see how she does. All right, it's been a few more hours. Let's take a look at it now. Wow, that's absolutely amazing. <laughs> Look at that. No scrubbing at all. Just soak and wipe. All right, uh, so to take it one step further, this is what I normally do. I'll normally put the valve in the end of a drill here, tighten it up, and then get a Scotch Brite pad, like so, and then just kind of wrap it around and just clean it that way. And then you can see this just. Unbelievable, it looks almost brand new. So the combination of both these methods uh, is pretty darn effective. Then you compare that with another one that was similar. Look at that. Hello, real quick, I wanted to make you aware of something. Um, you may have noticed when I was pulling the uh, lifters and the cam followers out of the motor i had not marked them uh, because my original intent was just to put new ones in well after looking at the price and the age of this car it doesn't make sense to get new ones so i'm going to end up putting the old ones back in and it's always best practice when you do that if you're going to reuse parts to make sure that they go back into the same position they were before so <laughs> obviously that's not going to happen since i didn't uh, label them um, I could get cheaper cam followers and lifters, um, but when when you get the cheap ones, obviously they're usually from China, and who knows, you know, the quality of them. I feel better about having the original ones in here, especially after looking them over because they don't look that bad or worn. So I think it would be best for me just to reuse it. Um, 
So anyway, that had me a little concerned um, once I made the decision to keep the, uh, the old parts and then reuse them. I did go on the internet to see if anybody else had done that and if they had any issues. And of course, there's lots of people that have done this and um, I have not heard of anybody actually having a problem doing it. However, that's not best practice. And if I knew at the time I was disassembling the motor, I would have labeled those so I could put them back into the same position. Um, but, uh, you know, you got old parts and they're mating up against different surfaces. So I kind of think of it like it's, it's kind of like putting new parts in where the, the parts have to wear into one another again. So if you're in the same position as me, I guess what I would do is treat this motor once it's back into the car as if though it were a new motor and go kind of through a break-in procedure. Um, I think that'd be the safest thing to do. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just put them back in, uh, keep my fingers crossed, hope for the best, and then take it real easy on the car for the first 500 to 1,000 miles and just keep my fingers crossed and hopefully we have no issues. Um, based on what I've read on the internet with other people doing this, they haven't had issues, so I really don't think it'll be a problem. But I wanted to make you aware, because uh, I, know, I know I'll get comments on it uh, once you guys learn that I'm putting the same parts back in. So anyway... Uh, that's why I'm doing it and yes I should have marked them or I should have looked up the prices or thought the project got a little better first uh, but I didn't um, so anyway that's the situation I just wanted to let you know okay the next thing I'm gonna do is put all these cam followers in the evaporus too as you can see some of these uh, rollers here have some rust on them so I'm just gonna dump them all in here and then after that I'll put them into a carb cleaner and totally clean them up all right we'll have to go through that procedure here next all right, uh, the cam has been sitting in here overnight, so let's go ahead and take a look at it and see how she looks. Looks a lot better. There, can you tell which one has been sitting in the evaporist overnight? What a difference. That's absolutely no scrubbing whatsoever. All right, and this is the area that was rusted real bad. You can see maybe there's just a slight bit of pitting there, but uh, hopefully we can polish that out. Okay, I just went ahead with the Scotch-Brite pad and just slightly kind of <clears throat> rubbed off the loose stuff. And uh, boy, the lobes look pretty good now. I don't really see much in the way of pitting. I guess we can go ahead and polish up those journals. But wow, what a difference. Okay, so I am cleaning uh, cleaning all these parts up and um, I'm cleaning up the lifters and I have them in these positions here, although that's not really where they came out of. Um, but one of the absolute most important things that you can do with an engine rebuild is to bleed the lifters. This can destroy your engine if you don't do it. And when they come out, um, you'll notice that they're really hard and you can't squeeze them. Well, this one you can a little bit, but some of them you're not gonna be able to squeeze. And um, that's the way they're supposed to be because they're loaded up with oil. And anyway, if you put them back in, especially into different positions um, where the valves are in different, different spots, different locations, um, you know, you could keep a valve open too far and uh, you could potentially have contact between the valve and the piston. So anyway, very, very important to bleed these before you put them back into the motor. So let's go ahead and bleed these uh, hydraulic lifters. Um, here's one that I cannot push down very well at all. About th that's about it. And um, you'll notice that there's a little hole on one side. When we compress this in the vise, we don't have that hole downward like so. Okay, so let's go ahead and put it in the vise with the hole down. Okay. Now, what I want to do here is just kind of keep a, a nice even pressure on the side here and don't force it too much because I don't want to damage anything. If you just apply a fixed force here, you'll see that it keeps moving every time the uh, cylinder relieves a little bit of pressure. And we should get there. There's a little bit of oil coming out the bottom. So it just goes in little increments like that. I'm just applying a one force on here, and you can see that it tricks forward here and turns a little bit about every second or so. 
and I don't want to completely compress this thing, but let's get it down about uh, three quarters of the way. And just take your time. Again, just don't wrench on this thing. Just a nice continuous force here, and it'll eventually close up and compress. Okay, looks like that's pretty close. Yeah, we'll go ahead and take it out. And once it's out, you can see I can easily compress this with my fingers. So now it's safe to put back into the motor. All right, now we just repeat this procedure 32 times, and then you're half done. So in other words, one of the heads is done. Now, if um, you'll get kind of a feel for how much pressure it takes to, to bleed this out. And uh, if you run into one that's significantly more difficult, that means there's probably some debris in here plugging up the, uh, one of the orifices. And in that case, you may want to disassemble one of these and completely clean it out. I'm probably not gonna go through that procedure unless I find one that's bad like that. <clears throat> but there's uh, plenty of videos out on the internet that will show you that procedure. Okay, here's my last one. These were all pretty consistent. Some were slightly easier than others, uh, but for the most part, they're pretty much all the same. So it's my understanding that some of the older cars that had the bigger springs um, didn't need to be bled because they kind of self-bleed because the springs are so powerful. Um, however, the newer cars aren't built like that. They have a much weaker spring, kind of that beehive spring that's a progressive spring that just isn't as strong. And so in the newer cars, it's definitely more important uh, to go through this procedure as the springs are just not strong enough to, to compress these and bleed these out in the car. All right, I just went ahead and pulled out the remainder of the um, cam followers from the uh, carb cleaner. Um, I did originally put them all into the evaporust because they did have a significant amount of rust. Um, so anyway, they're coming out of the carb cleaner. Now the carb cleaner will dissolve all the oil that's in these uh, rollers here and the bearings. So listen to this. You can hear that because there's no more oil in there. So the next thing we need to do is re-oil this and make sure that it operates nice and smooth and quiet. Let's put a little bit of oil back into this thing so it runs nice and smooth. Okay, so I went ahead and oiled up this one pretty good. You can no longer hear it when you spin the roller. However, the unoiled one definitely makes a lot more noise. So, I'll just keep oiling these. And then um, I think once I get them all to the point where I'm real happy, I'll just put them into a little glass of oil and then just soak them even more so. Definitely want to make sure there's oil all over in these things. Otherwise, those bearings are going to um, wear apart pretty quick. Yeah, that's already much quieter. And you can also feel that it's just uh, smooth now. You know, it's not scratchy or grabby. It's just nice and smooth. And also when you do these, uh, check and make sure that there's no play back and forth, up or down or anything like that. If there is any play in it, then you'll need to replace the roller. Okay, let's put some oil in here. And uh, once these are fully cleaned, once the cam follow cam followers are fully cleaned, we'll just go ahead and let them soak in oil. And I did also clean up the chain as well, so I'm going to let that go in there and soak. All right, got the cam followers soaked in the oil. Um, pulled the chain out. Looks really good. Don't see any rust on it anymore. I um, went ahead and put the remainder of the cam followers in the Kim dip. Okay, a lot of these bolt heads uh, have a fair amount of rust on them, as you can see here. So I'm going to put the remainder of these bolts into the evaporust. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pull these uh, cam followers out of the oil now. And then my pull each one, I'm just going to spin them, make sure that I don't feel any resistance and that they don't make any noise. And then there's no play in the roller. So far, these are all feeling really good.
Okay, at this point we have pretty much everything cleaned up. I'm just gonna basically follow the same procedures for the remainder of the parts. So you can see most of the valves are cleaned. So anyway, I'm gonna just go ahead and continue with this. I won't bother shooting any more video because it's just uh, more of the same. Okay, at this point, I think I've shown you all the things that I need to do and clean. There's still a few parts that I need to clean up, but it's just basically more of the same. So I'm not gonna bore you with shooting video of all of that. So anyway, I'm gonna call it quits for this video and I'll continue to clean up the parts. And then on the next video, uh, which would be part six, um, I'll go ahead and re start reassembling the heads and um, doing some valve lapping and then testing the valves to make sure that they're not leaking. So anyway, uh, please, again, if you like this material, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you, you will be reminded of videos going forward. And I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.